Jania Kiefer, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for spending the time. Thank you for having me. You know, you and I met, uh, well, I hate to date us, but we met quite some time ago at the company that's now Hitachi Consulting. It was a bunch of different things at the time being sort of merged together. Um, and we got to know each other there, but I don't know how you got into tech. Why did you decide to be a technology person? Yeah, that, we, let's go back a number of years. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, I got my undergraduate degree and I actually got my undergraduate graduate degree in biology and chemistry. And I really thought I wanted to go into the medical field. Mm -hmm. And uh, so got out of college and started doing quite a bit of volunteer work with hospitals and oncology units and these types of things. And, and kind of really found out that I don't think that that was the path that I really wanted to take. And so um, in the meantime, I had landed a job for a chemical company here in Irving as a microbiologist. And so, you know, that was my first kind of professional job, learning the ropes, learning how you get around in the company culture and whatnot. And uh, knew I wanted to get an advanced degree. And so that company offered me uh, the opportunity to pay for my master's degree and whatever I wanted it, to get it in. They really didn't care, didn't have any mandates. And so, I thought about it and I thought, I really think this computer thing is starting to take off. So um, I got a graduate degree, a master's degree in information systems. And while I was getting that degree, I was still working for the company, of course. And they said, hey, Jenny, we think we, we need your help on this, this project, this thing. And I was working in, in the lab part of the company, not in the IT part of the company. So they were talking to me about a shadow IT project, so to speak. And so they had the, the scientist in the lab had bought this, what's called a laboratory information management system off the shelf. Um, and they, they gave it to me and they said, it doesn't do what we want it to, what we need it to do. And I was like, well, I thought, well, why did you buy it? <laughs> can you help us make it do what we need it to do? And so that kind of uh, was my first entrance into not only from the academic side, but actually from a, a project side and, and teaching myself application development because I had to re-engineer and really just take, take what that was and turn it into something else. And really, you know, teach myself some project management skills and then I had to take and replicate that, you know, we had a US version, had to roll out to our US labs, and then I had to create a, a French Canadian version to roll out into Canada, and I had to create a Mexican version to roll out into Mexico. And so I had to go to all these different places. Wow. Um, so it was, a, was like a full really, international rollout. It was, it was. <laughs> and I was a one person IT shadow show. So. <laughs> It was quite, it was quite something. So, and ever since then, I've never looked back. Well, so that's actually my next question. Why have you not? There are people who started out in IT and leave for finance or marketing or, uh, I don't know, bus driving. Um, why have you decided to stay? And really, I mean, you've continued to work your way through that career, right? To be a vice president of information technology. Why? Yeah. You know, I think it's because every day is a different day. Um, certainly it's, it's exciting. It's something new. Um, I get to, to work with all kinds of people from around our company, around different companies. I get to interact with so many different professional cohorts. And, um, obviously the learning opportunity is huge. You know, we, we went to bed last night and woke up this morning and I bet there was probably a hundred plus different new technologies that hit the market that you know, we, we now need to kind of start learning about and assessing and figuring out how or why they should apply to what we're doing today. So it's really, it's really ever-changing, ever-evolving, and I find that to be very exciting. You know, you mentioned earlier shadow IT, um, and then you just mentioned all these emerging techs. So I wanna ask you a question. When we both started working, if you looked at a CIO or a vice president of IT, whoever the chief person was from technology in a corporation, one of their primary jobs would have been to be a gatekeeper, a controller of budget, 
to prevent things like shadow IT from coming around because it could be a waste of money and it could cause other problems as well. But I have to say lately, I have sensed a different, oh, I don't know what it would be, a different mod mode of thinking among IT professionals. And it seems like their lives are more about exploring all the new tech and trying to guide people in that direction. What are you seeing from your perspective? Yeah, definitely from my perspective, um, I feel that that IT, the IT department, um, we're, we're really here to be, uh, to perform business technology enablement is kind of the, the term I use. And what I mean by that is we're here to, to keep new projects going, to keep new ideation going, to um, help the company um, carry out projects and to help the company um, assess change and implement change and grow and expand and so on and so forth. And so we can't do that as an IT department if we're here managing all the day in day out of every little computer system or every process, computerized process that we put in place. And so to, to accomplish this, this ever growing need of doing more and, and producing more, more net new projects for the company, I really rely upon um, what I call our business leads out in our business units that um, are our main counterparts that we work with. And they ultimately will become the, the product owners of that technology or that solution and they will, they will own it, they will um, train their users on it, they will give us feedback, we will expand that product with them and help them grow it to the next phase and the next phase. And so really making sure we have those, those business leads, those business partners that are going to be there and we have somewhere to land everything so it doesn't just land within IT and stays within IT. That's not what we're doing anymore. Well, you're also talking about a process of letting go, right? Which is not an easy thing to do. Letting go and trusting your cohorts to do what they need to do. Yes. Right? And I mean, you know, um, we were just doing our, our incident response tabletop exercise and our business continuity tabletop exercise um, the past few days. And I was sitting next to um, our VP of sales and the, the, um, topic was a ransomware attack, a massive ransomware attack. You know, you have to kind of distend belief here. And, you know, we just wanted to make, make everyone feel the pain. What if this were to happen and all of our different controls just somehow failed and everything um, became attacked through ransomware? What, what, how would we operate without these, this technology enablement, these systems, these communication devices that we have, how would we operate? And, and he said, you know, we're all just slaves to technology because it was very difficult for everyone in that room to, to come up with how do we operate without um, these, these things in place, these technology enablements in place. And so I think that that is really key that, that Technology is the business and business um, is technology. And so it's, it's embedded together. It's not two separate things that you can put a wall up between anymore. You know, I think that's fascinating, particularly in the case of Acme Brick, where you work. I mean, Acme Brick is, uh, predates the microprocessor by something like 75, 80 years, right? It's an old company compared it's to the computer. Awesome. And yet you still are so intertwined these days with tech that you couldn't even operate is I think what you're saying without right. the technology. What are the primary, tell us, can you just tell us a little bit about like what tech looks like in a brick company? What does your technology stack look like? You know, um, we obviously have all the core systems that every other company has, ERP, CRM, yeah. um, um, you know, our cloud office 365, um, all of these basic things we have, but you know, uh, here at, at Acme Brick, we obviously manufacture. We manufacture our own brick throughout um, various manufacturing plants in the company. We sell and distribute that brick and many other um, building material products that we distribute that are manufactured by other vendors. 
and we transport those products um, to our It'll customers. Logistics as well. So we have, you know, all of the gamut of manufacturing, sales and distribution, transportation, um, obviously all of the back office uh, support um, business units that go, go hand in hand with all of that. And so, you know, we have technology enablement across all of those areas. Um, uh, what I've been really uh, excited about recently and in, in recent years is really getting into our manufacturing side, our manufacturing teams and really partnering with them on how we can um, help them understand their manufacturing processes, their plant efficiencies, um, being able to collect data more efficiently and aggregate that data to give them visualization so that they can get on their phone, they can check their plant performance at any time. They can get notifications when a line is down, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it's it's throughout. It's obviously throughout the company as in it is in most cases in most companies. So, um, and, and, you know, we have a bunch of things um, in the hopper as well for, for future endeavors. You know, one of the things that I noticed in getting ready for talking with you today is I would have assumed that almost all of your customers were builders, but a large part of your tech is retail facing to direct to consumer. Why is that? And has that changed over time? Yeah, I would say our three kind of customer sets that we primarily uh, interact with. Number one are those builders home builders, commercial builders. Um, but on the commercial side, we we integrate with the architects that design those, uh, those right. commercial buildings. And that's who we interface with to get our products spec'd into the commercial buildings. And then obviously there is that direct to consumer. And um, you know, most consumers that that is if they're building their own house. So most consumers when they're when they're buying a structure, they usually buy a house that's been built by a builder. So that is the main way that typically people buy houses, but we do um, obviously have that direct consumer market as well. So, you know, uh, definitely three distinct different types of customer sets that you're dealing with there. So you definitely want to make those um, customer experiences have to be um, delineated across those three different um, categories. And so that's something that's always very top of mind for us. Well, um, you should give some kudos to whoever designed the residential side of it, because I spent far too much time uh, looking at the residential products that, <laughs> that you have to sell. So it's neat stuff, actually. I think, again, I would thought of Acme as a brick company, but it's clear that you do far, far more than that, whether it's just the manufacturing or the logistics of it. It's, it's really interesting. That's true. That's true. Some very um, innovative products we have, very innovative products. Well, and what's on the horizon for Acme from a technology perspective? What are y'all looking at these days? Do you guys look at things like machine learning or like process automation for the factories? What are you looking at next? That's, that's a very good question. You know, we have um, some off the shelf um, technology that we're, we're looking to either upgrade um, because what we have currently have is, is past its life or or new stuff that we don't have that we have gaps in or opportunities that we want to fill. So some of those, uh, we're definitely looking at an enterprise performance management system um, to help us with all kinds of financial analytics and uh, budgeting forecasting um, type activities. Um, uh, along those same lines, we're looking at a, a full-blown human capital management system. Uh, that's something that we're lacking today, actually. And we have, uh, you know, a number of, of associates that make up our, our uh, Acme brick company. And so we need to, to better be able to, to service those associates better through, through a full out HCM system. Um, some other things that we're looking at is really expanding our digital footprint um, and how we present our Acme brick products digitally. Um, and that experience that we give those customers. So really um, building out that digital roadmap and understanding where we wanna go and how we're gonna get there. So we're working on that. Um, definitely analytics and BI. Uh, when, I, when I came here, um, I had the mantra, uh, think big, start small and scale fast. And, and along those lines of my think big, 
was um, I want uh, BI addiction across the company, business intelligence addiction across the company and or data addiction as some people might say. And uh, I think we're getting there. We're, we're definitely talking, we've rolled out um, a number of visualizations, dashboards, mobile enabled analytics and people are wanting more and more. And we talk about it a lot. And I think that's something that we're going to spend a number of years continuing to build out. And then to your point, um, looking, going back to our manufacturing side, how can we start layering in some more predictive type technology to help us understand what's going on on those manufacturing lines and to, pro to prohibit or help control the outages um, that, that we may be occurring um, uh, to mitigate those. And I would say lastly, we definitely um, need to start exploring AI and ML, as you talked about, um, and, and ways that we can apply uh, those concepts here um, in various different areas of, of the company. So those are all, you know, kind of key things that we're going to be working on over the next coming years. So we, uh, you know, I used to do business intelligence work a long time ago, and that area has changed maybe more than anything in yeah. technology in the last 20 years. I mean, it's a huge, huge yeah. difference. We've seen great luck in doing customer analytics with machine learning. So things like what offers will most likely attract this customer or um, how likely is this customer to default over a certain period of time on credit, those kinds of things. But what do you use it for in manufacturing, like process manufacturing? You said you would use it to track things like outages. What would you be analyzing in your world? Well, you know, certainly on the manufacturing lines, um, you know, you always have your planned outages because you're going to do upgrades or whatever. But then unfortunately we have those unplanned outages yeah. and those can be those can be stem from a number of different types of, of reasons. So how can we understand what's what is the cause of these unplanned outages? These are things like equipment failure. If you start or predicting when something when something either is past its maintenance cycle mm -hmm. or is is getting close to starting to to uh, to fail at some point, you know, can we start sensing these things before they actually happen? And so that's something that I've always been very interested in um, from, from a manufacturing uh, standpoint. And then, you know, really as well on, on kind of the sales, um, how, how unfortunately weather comes into play a lot when you're in the building material space. You know, when, you, when it rains outside, construction kind of comes to a halt and uh, most of our customers are those home builders. And so, you know, how does weather patterns and, and other types of factors um, affect uh, what's going to be happening to our deliveries, to our ability to, to sell products and, and whatnot and service our customers appropriately? So how can we use that type of information to, to improve our customers' experience? That's really interesting. Very interesting. I used to work in paper manufacturing of all things and all of those things apply right we had you know you'd have presses go down or vats go down that were unexpected and you know one of those going down could set up an entire line for days right. actually if you're not careful right. so well thank you for spending time with me today last question if you were going to give advice to new people coming into the technology career what would you tell new people coming into computer science or engineering you know, I would say that that probably for me, my biggest win throughout my entire career and what's helped me move from position to position or project to project or company to company has been not so much the technology side of it, but I, what I call the ability to work through people. And so um, I think as you, if you even look at a project or look at a whole company, there's just a litany of things that need to get done. And you and yourself are probably not going to be the person to do all of those things. But understanding from a larger perspective, all of these things that have to get done, and then being able to connect and create relationships with people um, to, to help drive that work 
through them and, and so that we're all one team, we're all working together um, to move forward in, in one you know, swift movement. I think that's been key, um, you know, and you can apply that to, to any profession that you want to, whether it's technology or anything, but certainly, certainly the people side of it and, and maximizing everybody that you're working with and trusting them and them trusting you, I think is, is the biggest key. Where do you think that comes from, that capability to work through others and for them to work through you, right? It's a reciprocal exactly. thing. Absolutely. Right? Where Absolutely. do you think that comes from? Where do I think it comes from? Um, I don't know where it comes from. That's a good question. I never thought of that. Um, Not everyone has it. It's and, it. and you probably didn't have it as well as you do now when you were 20, right? You right. built this skill. I think it's something you honed for sure. I think, I think you're right. I think, you know, we all think probably when we're younger, we can, we can you know, solve all the world problems and whatnot. And as we kind of go through life, we figure out, oh, well, there's some really big problems out there and it's gonna take a lot of different people and a lot of different skills to, to come together and to solve any one given thing. And I think that that's really where, where it stems from. It's, it's knowing that, you know, whether you call it a, a problem or an opportunity, and you can rally people around you to, to focus their priorities. You know, I'm, I'm a top three, what's your top three priorities? And let's start moving with each other to accomplish our top three priorities, whatever that is. And let's maximize each other's skills. And uh, I think it's really a team effort and recognizing that, that most things in life are a team effort and I believe you get a better product when you apply a team effort rather than an individual effort. That's for sure true in technology, right? It's such a fascinating space because I think that a lot of people who are relatively introverted go into the space of technology and it ends up when you're on an engineering team solving problems, you're on a big team. Yes. And the personal dynamics are very important. It's a yes. You know, if you wanted to be an independent person, you might have been better off being an artist or something. Right. <laughs> a technology person. Right. I agree. I agree. Well, thank you so much for sharing your background and experience with us today, Jania. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, Jim. Nice talking with you.